Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, go to chapter 6, also, Son of man, thus saith the Lord, unto the land of Israel. Alright, so what we say, you can't put it on Gentiles. An end, an end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now, is that the four corners? You say Israel is not shaped like a square or a rectangle. As a diamond, kind of, all right? North, east, west, and south are four corners. An end has come. You say, okay, yeah, all right. God's all finished with Israel. The end's come, see? And you never heard of a sequel? How many Hollywood movies? The first one comes out, and that's it. It's the end. And six months later, seven months later, and a year later, and then you got the sequel. The actor didn't die, or the character didn't die, and the people. How come people give more credit to the world than they do to God? Now, the end. Well, what's the end? We know what the end is by reading Jeremiah. The city comes to an end. <laughs> Stops. But under Ezra and Nehemiah, <laughs> it comes back. The city was put to the end in 70 A.D. But World War One, World War Two, that's how I remember the dates. It come back. We, just, we don't give God the credit we do to man. Now is the end come upon thee, Israel. I will send my anger upon thee. And will judge thee according to thy ways. And what what's the uh, thy ways? It's your sins, it's your iniquity. Israel is causing the evil and the end upon themselves because they would not adhere to the law. They would not adhere to Isaiah and Jeremiah. And they're not adhering to Ezekiel. They're not listening. So their way is rebellion. Okay? You want rebellion? Then God's going to rebel against them in righteousness that, hey, it's not God rebelling, it's Israel. I will recompense upon thee all thy abominations. And go back to the law and go back to Jeremiah. And look up what we read so far in Ezekiel, the abominations of Mary, the, you know, the queen of heaven, the idols, the images, killing their children, the mole, my eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. Now look at verse 2. It says, the land. We know God spared Ezekiel. He's in Babylon. We know God sp uh, 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 spared uh, Daniel. He's in Babylon. We know God spared Jeremiah. So how can you say, well, God, you know, God did not spare anybody. God did not have pity. You know, didn't the Ethiopian eunuch, then he survived, didn't it? But go back to verse 2, it says, the land. And when we read Nehemiah, when he takes his little donkey for a trip, and he's, the wall was his other way, he got to one point in the wall, he couldn't even go any further. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee. Now, notice too, the sins of the people affect the land, affects the city. We've got fires burning out of control in California, burning land, burning houses, trying to prevent them from the sequoia trees and all that. They just said one of those fires, they, they caught an arsonist. 
That's all the work of God. That's sin. As the earth gets more and more violence, the earth responds with all these catastrophic events. It's not El Nemo. It's not climate change. It's God. I, I read a post the other day. I thought it was absolutely funny. They're saying, they're saying you know, we're in fall. It's starting to get cold. And, then, you know, next is going to be winter. We're going to be freezing. And it goes, wait a minute. No, it's not winter. They're going to call it climate change. And they will. They will change the name of winter, summer, spring, and fall. I had to think there for a moment. I said I'm out of order. Why would they do that? Because the Bible says winter, spring, winter, spring, summer, and fall. They're moving themselves away from God and His Word. That's what modern Bibles do. Take the word, take out the these and thous. No. I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is, all the world, not just America, you're going to start seeing things happen. I thought it was funny when we, well, at the time my daughter was born, it came out with these 50 state quarters and on, on the back of the quarters was a national monument to each of the states and all these monuments like i think it was new hampshire vermont one of the man of mountain rock and the monuments started decaying and falling and crashing amen god said you're not to have the idols My eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee. Thy abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. That's number five. And how shall you know the Lord? I am the Lord. That's what God told Moses. Lord, they're going to ask your name. What's your name? I am. That I am. How are they going to know it when they look at Judah and Jerusalem and they see it destroyed? And make note, as we go along, as the Lord willing, I'm going to show you each and every time. We read one time that the I am, you should know I am. Pestilence, sword. So, What's one of the things that you will know that I am the Lord? Think about, we're up to number five right now. Think about what would happen to these people. Oh, he's God. Think about it. They've died and gone to hell. And in hell they... Well, look at that. The Word of God's right. You realize today... And I'm I'm evangelist. I, I try to get the word out. I try to preach the gospel. Out. You know, like my ministry God's given me is the farmer's market. You realize know, for many of those people are gonna realize one day when they die, without God, they've not listened to the preaching. You realize know, they're gonna they're gonna wake up in hell and gonna say, well, damn. That preacher was right. That is God. This this weekend I preach. Prepare to meet thy God. I said atheist, Baptist, Catholic, because not everybody, not all Baptists have the God. And when they end up in hell, well, that's too late. I mean, that's, you go in the kitchen, you pour yourself a bowl of cereal, you put the milk in there, you bring it back, you put your spoon in the milk, and you go take a bite, and then you realize, Oh, the milk's gone bad. <laughs> oh, the milk is sour. After you got a spoonful of cereal and sour milk. And you don't have no more cereal because you don't have any more milk. It's too late. Realize Adam and Eve realized too late what evil was. You can't stop and turn it around. 
What does, you know, Adam and Eve did not die. They, they died spiritually, but they did not die. And what was the real first grand news that's recorded in the Bible that we know Eve knew? I don't know how she found that. Your son Abel was killed by your by your other son Cain. Thus saith the Lord God. All capital. And evil. And only evil. Behold is come. What is evil? Is evil sin? It can be. Evil is one of them words that it can be sin. So, to explain evil real quick. Somebody goes in. Somebody goes to the doctor, and the doctor says, "You got, <clears throat> you got lung cancer. You're gonna die." You say, "Doctor, how do I get lung cancer?" Smoking. Doc, yes, I don't smoke. Are you anybody around anybody who does smoke? Yeah, my spouse smokes. Well, who is the evil? The spouse that smokes. What is the evil? Secondhand smoke. What is the evil that secondhand smoke? Cancer. Evil can be a sin, but it doesn't have to be your sin. And evil can be a consequence of your sin. You're driving home from whatever thing, and you get nailed by a drunk driver. Now you didn't get out. You didn't go out and, and do any real big sin. You didn't drink, but you had the consequence of the evil someone else is drinking. And there's a place in the Bible where it says God says, "I create evil." And, well, that's not sin. That's the consequence of sin. The wages of sin, that can be evil, not always, is death. The death is the consequence, evil, of sin. A baby is born from the womb addicted to narcotics. Well, it's not the baby that sin, and that the evil is that child has been born because of somebody else and the evils passed on to and that's what a lot of people why are all the children dying why are all these people suffering why are all these people it's evil and you can run that all the way back to Adam and Eve that's the consequences you got to deal with it the end is come the end is come it watches for thee Behold, it has come. And it came in Jeremiah's time. Lamentations is the after. Ezekiel in Babylon is going to get word all his fallen. But he is a preacher with Jeremiah. Oh, they would only listen, but they're not going to. And you got to wonder, because Daniel was part of the first or second captivity of three Nebuchadnezzar. you got to wonder, if, is Daniel trying to do something too to help? But Daniel seems to be an after prophet. A post. The morning is come unto thee, O that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the time is trouble is near. And not the sounding again of the mountains. I don't know what that expression of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee. We've already read that in Jeremiah. And accomplish my anger upon thee. 
and I will judge thee according to thy way. It, and Jeremiah, I mean, yeah, Jeremiah says, if you go with, with king of Babylon and surrender, okay. If you don't, if you stay and you fight, you're going all right, did you stay and fight? Okay, well, you're going to dead. You realize after Babylon came, they still rebelled against God. Ishmael went and killed, I can't think what his name was. And Jehanan came in, rescued the people. Jeremiah tells what God says to do. Whatever God tells us what to do, stay in the land. And they went to Egypt. And God killed them. Except Jeremiah, Baruch, because they were man stolen. I will recompense thee for all thy abominations. And you go back in the law, and you go back and read in Jeremiah, and look at all the abominations, and they are being done today, 2021. They're done by the Catholics, they're done by the Baptists, they're done by the Presbyterian. There is sodomy, there, there is idolatry, there is... Uh, images and idols and killing your children and just Jeremiah is current events for today that's what's said because the people will say I don't like the Old Testament so they have the knowledge that God killed Sodom and Gomorrah for their only for their sexual perversion. And yet, I think it was Jeremiah, or we'll read in Ezekiel, it was more than sexual perversion. It's the sins of America. It's step one, and we'll get we'll get to that sin. Right now, America's starting to turn her back on Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. That is number six. What's number six? I'm not going to have any pity when the judgment calls. What's the any pity when you're dead in hell? That's too late to know, but... You didn't listen to the word of God. You always, when you go out there and, and you tell people about Jesus, not your church, you tell them about the gospel, not movie night, and they don't listen and they don't believe in Jesus before they die, and they die without the saving grace of Jesus, at that moment they're going to know, okay, too late. But you did a Jeremiah, you did a Ezekiel, you, you tried to warn them. Behold the day, behold, it is come. The morning's gone forth, the rod has blossomed. That rod is, is a chastening. That rod blossom into almonds, and almond blossoms when Aaron's rod budded in, in the tabernacle to say, hey, this is God's chosen people, and what happened? There were people that died because they assert the authority over Moses and Aaron. That's to bring you back to history. Now, what if no, they didn't, but what if Israel had changed history. What, you know what? We, we, we didn't need that story where God killed all those people. We, we'll take out everything. In our, in our modern Bible, we'll take everything you have to do with Aaron in a book. I, I mean, that's ridiculous. Aaron's dead stick blossom into almonds. We'll take that out of the Bible. And then you come across Ezekiel and the rod had blossomed. What's that mean? You lost the cross reference. How about telling somebody in a modern Bible, go to all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, let them go try to find it. It's not in their Bible. 
And so they'll run over to Matthew to commission the Jew, and we'll go in there and we'll teach all nations and baptize in them. And we have a gratification of a Baptist movement under Matthew, the Great Commission. We ought to be called evangelist preachers by Mark 16 because we go out in the world and tell them about Jesus through preaching. Get the Bible all wrong. So look at the reference back to, I think it was Numbers. And right after that happened, there was death and there was destruction because of rebellion. Aren't we right there right now? You know what the dangers of changing history is? You don't learn from history. And when you remove this, this slavery is bad, but when you remove all this thing about slavery, I gotta look this up. Hold on. We'll go, we'll go out of the way for a moment here. Well, let me show you something. I think it's in that. They're changing history to get because we don't like slavery. I don't like it either, but take your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18, verse 13. And Revelation 18, 13 is a grand supermarket, chapter 18, of the Antichrist. And I'm not going to mention the store name because it's going to be bigger than the most popular store found in America. Okay? I don't want people to think, well, he said it, this store is the. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to. This is the grand. Now, watch what. And, and this is just part of it. But look at Revelation 18 13. Look at what you can buy in the aisles of this place. Ready? Cinnamon. Ooh, that's good. Apple, cinnamon. Odors. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to go and buy stinky stuff. Well, some women's perfume. But that's the fragrance. That's those candles. Those things you plug in the wall. And ointments. All kinds of things that you can anoint yourself. Medicine. Or frankincense. And wine. And oil. Flour. Fine flour. And wheat. And bees. Well, look at it. Okay. Sheep and horses. Well, this is all the merchandise under the Antichrist. And chariots. And slaves. So if you get rid of slaves in your history. And everything about them. What are you going to do when the Antichrist comes up? And start selling people in the market. How are people going to, I mean, how are they going to be forewarned that if you don't learn what happened in Africa, this is what happened, and this is being all we read, how they went over to Africa, they paid one tribe to conquer an enemy tribe and outfitted them. And the losers they put in chains and they put on the ships and they brought to, that's what happened. And Christopher Columbus and the Europeans and the Catholics did that come into America. How are they going to know that this is happening again when you have raced it all? I mean, the slaves are going to be just as... Con Let's see. Honey, yeah, okay, you want to get some cinnamon? I'll make you some cinnamon apples like you... Oh, right. And... You want to get something for the bathroom because, man, when you after you're done with the bathroom, you stink. Get one of those spray cans, something good because you stink. All right, and get me some white because you know my cheeks. You know I like to I like my cheeks look. You know I like to paint my face. I don't know what you use frankincense for, but you know you got the incense and stuff like that. Make your house smell good because when you come out of that bathroom, phew, you stink. And let's get some wine. Ooh, you know, the kids are away. We'll have a candlelight dinner and all that and everything. Okay, we'll, we'll get some wine. Get some oil. We'll, we'll fry, I'll fry up some food and some flying fire. We'll have some fried chicken. And wheat. I'll make some bread. 
you know, how about we get the kids a cat or get the kids a dog? They've been asking for a dog. So, you, you want to get a dog? Sheep? The lawnmower died. Man, we get a sheep. That, that sheep will eat the grass and we can take, we can make, hey, get some sweaters. Horses and chariots? Hey, we need a new car. Bring up the date. Okay, we need a new car. Get something with horsepower. And you know what? I need some help. Purchase one of them. Purchase one of them people so they can come in our house and do do the work we tell them to do. That's in the grocery list, isn't it? And then just for the, look at the last one: souls of men. You know how the souls of men end up in that list when they take the mark of the beast to buy those groceries. That was extra. That didn't cost you nothing. There it is. But did you see the rod? You know, I read my Bible through a year. And the rod of blossom, pride, the blood, and violence is red. I did my five verses. Okay, you did your five verses. But did you study? And then pride had budded. Okay. Oh yeah, pride is sin and all that. Yeah, okay. But did you get the reference? I believe it's back in Numbers. It was pride that brought Aaron's rod to blossom. Because, you know, look who we are. Who do you think you are? Well, you know, what about us? God spoke to us. Ezekiel 7.10 brings us the Jewish history of men that were prideful and Aaron's rod that blossomed and what happened to consequences afterward. Death. Violence is risen up. That's what they did against Moses and Aaron. They rose up against them. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. You know what God's saying right now, according to that rod in the book of Proverbs. God is going to chasten the children of Israel, Judah. He's going to chastise them. They're going to get their butt beat. And they're going to die. But he's, I mean, Proverbs said, you know, if you beat your child, he's not going to die. And you'll divert his soul from going to hell. Israel's gotten too late, too far. Because they're stiff necked. None of them shall remain. Nor of their multitude. Their family, nor any of theirs, their possessions were carried away, and the Babylonians owned it. A lot of people think, you know, he was the most toys in the end wins. No. Just look at the pharaohs. They went off to the happy pharaoh land, and they didn't take nothing. Most of those pharaohs went off into hell. And they left the stuffed mummies, the stuffed kitty mummies. They left their honey. They left their gold. They left it all behind in some museum today. If you think he with the most toys in the end wins, you need to take a trip to an Egyptian museum. They're all over the world. And look at that stuff and, and say, excuse me, Mr. Uh, I don't know what they call him today, but Mr. Guide. So this, I, I, I got one question. All this stuff we're looking at today, where did it come from? Well, this is the tombs of the great whatever pharaoh. Uh, 
Another question? You mean where they buried the Pharaoh? Yeah, right where you buried. Well, damn, I can't take it with me then. And there have been foolish people have been buried in their cars and all the kinds of stuff. Neither shall there be wailing for them. Because their family's going to die. Their loved ones are going to die. Or it's just going to be a monstrosity that there's going to be no care. You know, when the Black Death went to Europe, there was no time of weeping because by the time your, your, your family member died of the Black Death, you died within hours afterwards, if not days. The time has come. The day draweth near. It's important. God's repeated twice. Let not the buyer rejoice. Look what I got. Look how much money I saved. Nor let the seller mourn. Oh, man. I lost money. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. So whether you're buying things or whether you're selling, whether you gain money or you lose money, both of them are going to suffer. And the great deal you got or the money you put in your pocket doesn't mean nothing. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold. It ends up in Babylonian hands. Although they were yet alive. Alright, so he bought something. He didn't get to go back to it and he yet alive. What happened to him? He's on his way to Babylon. And some Babylonian soldier picked it up and brought it home to honey for his children. Look what I got in the land of Judah, hon. Oh, that's so pretty. I like that. What did it cost you? It didn't cost me nothing. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, all of Judah, which shall not return. Daniel was in the land, and he was brought to Babylon, and when he's mentioned, he's not mentioned in the names of Ezra and Nehemiah. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. Wow, I just really rebelled against the Lord. I feel so you feel so dead. Because that's what you are. Daniel, you'll find one one of Daniel's great prayers of repentance. Daniel learned, you know what? We were wicked in the land. I always wondered if Daniel was one of the king's children, the blue blood. I wonder if he prayed towards the temple when he was in Jerusalem. Because he was sure praying, was it three times was it, in, in Babylon? I mean, did being put captive in Babylon kick Daniel's butt? Or chasing his butt. 